Many years ago, on the internet, I discovered that the law of attraction was really popular. I saw a lot of interviews, some testimonials, uh, I, I saw the, the film The Secret, I read some books and, and I thought, gosh, this is how I live now for so many years. Uh, this is how I, I realized so many dreams. I wanted a family, I wanted to live on a boat, I wanted to be a musician. And uh, yet, it was not always like that. Oh, in the beginning I didn't have work, I had to play on the street, I had three divorces, I was very bad at school. And so, where did it change? Why is my life today so different? Welcome on board of the 47 meter long canal barge Le Maître Sonneur and the Beauty of Life. This is the story of how I became the musician in the life of my dreams and how this dream made me the musician I ever wanted to be. You need more to become a musician than only practicing scales and arpeggios on your instrument. Come and join us as we take to the extraordinary of life of creativity. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe or like. It's a great way to support our channel. But uh, no, I don't always get what I want. Some, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. How come it doesn't work? Yeah, that's a tricky one. There are two ways. The easy way and the difficult way. And I must admit that for many things I chose the difficult way and I'm not sure that's the best. The easy way is, uh, is less tiring. When you follow your talent and when you follow something that is like it was meant for you. I started playing violin when I was four years old. Like a destiny. Yeah, maybe. I was four years old and, and my parents didn't tell me I had to play violin. I asked for playing violin. Now, I have children and when my children were four years old, they didn't ask me for playing violin. If I asked for that, then there was a reason why I had to play violin. Indeed, I kept playing violin all my life. Was it easy? No, <laughs> absolutely not. But some things were easy. So when you follow your, your talent, when you follow your life purpose, maybe that's a good word, then, uh, then it goes easier than when you do something completely against what you're made of. You cannot ask uh, a fish to climb in a tree. So I am who I am and I'm unique as I am and, and if I follow those things then, then it goes easier than when I try to be what I'm not. How can you know? The best way to know what is your life purpose, the best way to know what is your talent, is to look at yourself when you do something. How do you feel? Do you feel good or do you feel bad? Is it easy? Is it difficult? And I don't mean that you need to be lazy. Uh, when, when, I, when I work for something, I work very, very, very hard. And sometimes it is hard, but 
it goes smoothly time goes very very fast and um, I don't I forget all the rest <laughs> I need to be careful not to forgetting to get my children from school because I'm in another world that is uh, life purpose when you feel bad about something then for sure that is, this is not your real self when you feel depressed when you feel uh, struggled and and you you don't you don't want to get up in the morning you feel oh no I'm very good in my bed in my cozy bed then for sure that you can look at your life situation and think what is going on where can and then you need to make changes and that is the difference between one or another person how much are you willing to change in your life people that are complaining that they don't have any time how much time are they watching television maybe you can skip only one hour one hour a week is seven hours no to do other things you, you see what I mean so you need to to make up your mind and what is it that you want and what am I willing to do to get it and the way you know if 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 you are on the right path or not is how you feel that is as simple as it is I got a lot of things going well when I chose to to have a dream to have a goal and and then I kind of let it go that's the thing when you really try to make it happen then sometimes uh, it goes slower but you need to to have your goal in in mind you have a purpose and you cannot step away of it and you need to be very very clear about that and then by the end you can hit the goal but the way you go to it it's it's, it's not always clear and i think the 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 best way is to feel that you are already doing it I, I remember as a child I was seeing myself playing violin I was I was convinced that I was already on stage and already playing uh, and having a career as a child that's quite easy to do because you, you imagine never lost that I was um, as a as a um, adult also daydreaming you know so I was seeing myself and feeling how I was on stage and I think that was and this was before I heard about the law of attraction I didn't know there was a law about this I thought it was I thought everybody was acting like that. You need to be very, very patient and never, never, never give up. Everything I did in my life, I never gave up until I had it. I could accomplish many things with having the law of attraction in mind, but not everything. You need to believe that what you wish is possible. For instance, I cannot wish now to be in Tahiti. <laughs> That's impossible. I cannot wish now to be a millionaire. That's impossible. So I need to believe that what I want is possible. <laughs> I was with the children in in this um, Technopolis in, in Mechelen, in the, this huge uh, center where kind of museum muse, museum where you can uh, try some technical and physical stuff with the children. And there was this law of Newton, this third law of Newton, with those balls next to each other. And then then you take one ball and you you hit it on all those balls, and then the very last one goes away. You know. And then I thought, well, yeah, that's how my life was. You, you put some energy somewhere 
and then you don't know where that energy go and then you see it going up and so I put a lot of energy in something and then without knowing what the result will be I get a result and every time the result is different than I thought it would be but I achieve my goal but in a different way than, than I thought I would have done it maybe you should give an example yeah for sure I've I have plenty of examples um, this is how I recorded all my CDs I, I arranged uh, all my label contracts uh, this is how I was uh, dreaming of playing with Sting and I already have two appointments with him this is how I uh, how I, I I organized my tour in China for the first time and met almost by accident uh, our minister of culture and he told me that he uh, knew me and that he had my music in his car you know uh, crazy stuff uh, this is how I played with Stefan Grappelli also maybe that is uh, a beautiful uh, story to tell I was only 16 years old and I was playing violin uh, I was trying to copy Stefan Grappelli for me it was the, the the greatest jazz violin player and I was uh, trying to play all his solos by heart you know and uh, I, I had a video of him, I was copying him, I was all, all, also copying his shirts, no, I, I was collecting shirts with, uh, with uh, flowers and I met, also almost by accident, I met his uh, uh, guitar player, Philippe Catherine in Brussels and uh, he talked about me to uh, Stefan Grappelli and the manager of Stefan Grappelli wrote me a letter that uh, if I wanted to meet him he would be in Brussels but I got the letter too late two weeks later so I was so disappointed and I immediately wrote the letter back um, and uh, he said that's not a problem just uh, take the train and come to Paris so I did I met him I was uh, I was in heaven already <laughs> So I met him a couple of times, I went to Paris uh, and finally he told me that, uh, he asked me if I wanted to play with him on stage and of course I said yes and uh, I, we met uh, in Lille uh, at the French border um, uh, just before the sound check, you know, and but his guitar player, Marc Fosse, said, no way, no way, we're not going to play with Didier tonight. Uh, we are not enough um, prepared, we didn't have a rehearsal, I don't know how he plays, no way. So I was really, really disappointed again. I asked, well, but is there any possibility that it might be playing another time or so? And um, uh, Marc said, well, uh, let's see. Uh, oh no, his manager told me, well, let me talk to Marc. Uh, I'll try to arrange it, uh, but it was uh, obviously quite difficult. He was a stubborn guy. But uh, um, jo Joseph, so his manager, told me uh, in two weeks we will play in Ghent at the OD Jazz Festival. So be on time uh, for a rehearsal in the afternoon and I'll try to have a rehearsal with Mark. So uh, I went to Ghent, uh, I was really, really nervous again and um, I was on time for the rehearsal, Marc was there, Jean-Philippe Firet on the double bass was there and uh, no, no Stefan Grappelli. <laughs> he, was, he was eating with some guys and then finally five minutes before the sound check Stefan uh, entered and we had the sound check and, uh, and I was like what now? I didn't have a proper rehearsal with him. But they said, okay, let's let's do it. Uh, so I had a tr sound check with them, and uh, and uh, Mark uh, told us, okay, let's uh, let's play together. We arranged when I had to play, and between this song and that song, but there was still a big problem. Stefan was really old at that moment. He was even in a wheelchair, and I, I, he was forgetting so much. So the manager told me, be careful Didier, because it's not sure that you are going to be able to play, because if Stefan doesn't invite you on stage, you cannot come and you cannot play. So I was waiting for the moment, uh, the first song passed by, the second passed by, the third passed by, and then my song would arrive and 
Stefan forgets me. <laughs> and I was, oh no, there goes my dream. And then Marc Fosse uh, said, aren't you uh, forgetting your petit lapin? <laughs> he was calling me mon petit lapin, my little rabbit. Oh yeah, said Stefan. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. And then he announced me and then I came, I played and everything went well. <laughs> was Marc Fosse that was responsible for the re for realizing my dreams. In the beginning he was against me and then finally he helped me. Isn't it so that you need to control how to realize your dream? The first thing you need to do is to know what you want. And that is also a tricky one. You need to make up your mind and to decide exactly what you want. And you need to see the end goal and you need to feel that it is already happening. And then the how is not of my business. I'm not smart enough to know what is going to be tomorrow. I cannot, I don't have a crystal ball, I don't know what is going to be tomorrow. But I can know what I want. And that's in my mind. So when I learn to use my mind properly, then things changed in my life. Another tricky thing is uh, life doesn't know the difference between good or bad, no. Um, life doesn't know the difference between... Uh, life doesn't understand words, I mean the, the vocabulary. What life does understand is your intention, your feeling, your, uh, your impression about something. So if you're happy or if you're sad, actually, in, in fact that's the same kind of energy. I know it's the opposite, but the result will be the same. Let me explain this. When I don't want something, <laughs> for sure I will get it. So if I complain and if I, if I say, oh, I really don't want to this or this or that, you can be sure that I will get it. Especially when I get mad, when, when, when the energy is really, really strong and I get mad at it and no way that I want this again and then I get it. <laughs> so I learned this a long time ago, but I still do it sometimes, but uh, it's still a work in progress. But so that's really important. You need to know what you want and you don't think about what you don't want. It's all about training. When you know the theory, that's very good. When you understand the theory, that's very good. When, when, you, when, you, uh, when you apply it, that's, easy, that's even better. But I learned that I had to do it every day every day. When I do something 10,000 times, I become, I become good at it with my scales, with my arpeggios or tunes that I want to play. That's how training works. So discipline is needed, uh, like learning an, in, an instrument. Uh, this is also a habit. So when I, I would do it only once in the morning in my meditations, um, uh, my affirmations, only 20 minutes, then I would not get the same result than when I do it 10,000 times all over again and, and see me doing it and seeing the end result and again and again and, again and so on. And this is good because uh, life gives you time to think about what you really want. If you would ask something that you don't want and you would ask it in an ironic way, life would give it to you immediately, uh, then you would have some problems, no? <laughs> So timing here is really important. 
and this is one of the most important things that I learned and and music helped me for this because there is no music without timing no <laughs> This energy is um, a certain frequency and um, it's difficult to... But I'm not a scientist so I cannot tell you exactly how it works scientifically but what I do know is that this frequency is near... Is, it can be translated in, um, in other kind of, uh, of uh, uh, things that we know of daily life. For instance, compassion. Um, uh, unconditional love, uh, so helping somebody, uh, taking care of when it is when you do this completely for free. Um, this is the energy that I that I can put at near nearby the energy, the, the, this creating energy. So when I feel compassion, when I feel gratitude for something, I am training this kind of energy. When I play music with that energy, then my music works better. Then I play uh, the, the right music, the right note on the right moment. You know what I mean? Then I, without willing to do something good, better, new, I don't want to be the the, the, the best musician of the world. I don't want to make the music that is that was never made. I don't want to be special, but I want to play the right note on the right moment. I want to to touch the the feeling and the emotions of the audience. So when after a concert somebody comes to me and say, "Wow, thank you. I had such a nice evening. I forgot about everything and I was just with you in your story." Then I'm happy. Then I have this feeling that I succeeded. <laughs> So there are so many things now going on um, in research of the brain. Uh, I know in neuroscience uh, uh, they are so far now with the modern uh, technology, and um, and I also know that that uh, the, the the classic modern science and and let's say the alternative modern science uh, uh, like quantum physics and and others are working more and more together now and uh, and. I, I read a lot of books about it. So I, I'm really passionate about how our brain is working. Uh, like uh, Elon Musk is also working on this development of, of, of the human brain. And I, I think it's really, really good to do research uh, and to learn. But I also am convinced that to learn how to use our brain in a better way, that is, in my opinion, the real secret. Uh, our brain has uh, such a big capacity and um, mostly if you combine your brain intelligence with other kinds of intelligence like your heart for instance today they, they, had, they have proved scientifically that your heart also has neurons no so your heart can think and uh, tr translate it into musical terms uh, when I play with my head I'm I'm only playing notes when I play with my heart, I'm playing with my feelings. But when I combine those, when I can uh, use my, my brain and my heart together, then I can go deeply in an intelligent way. And that is uh, what I'm looking for nowadays the most. Music is also about frequencies. Is that the same? It was not an accident that I went from the violin to the nickel harpa. Because the nickel harpa has something really interesting in a physical matter, or maybe a quantum physical matter. Every note is supported by another string. That's a particularity of the nickel harpa, uh, sympathetic strings like the sarangi in, the, in India, like the uh, uh, sitar in India also, or the viola d'amore. So this, uh, 
this church sound of the of the nickel harpa is due to the sympathetic strings now what is it it's like you remember in the physical class you had this tuning fork in one hand and the, and another the same one in your other hand and you were hitting only one and then you you approached the the one that was vibrating the other one and the other was one was also vibrating this is eigen f uh, frequency this is uh, a, a syntonic um, uh, influence from one materi materi to the other one and so this is how it works how the nickel harpa works when you have the A string and it is vibrating with the bow and then the little string that has the same uh, frequency that is underneath is going to vibrate at the same time and this is how they say the law of attraction works you have a frequency or an energy and that is going somewhere that is vibe touching the uh, material with the same sensibility and then that same energy comes back in the quantum physics they discovered that every uh, thought has also a frequency so the energy of that thought when you when you send it that thought cannot do, do anything else than coming back in in the material way so this is how I discovered that thing that I could create things I had to think about it and then I could materialize it I went from the violin to the nuclear harpa because I needed to understand this in the end everything is okay that's one line that everybody knows but if it's not okay already then it just means that it's not the end In the next episode of Le Maître Sonneur... It looks a little bit dilapidated, but believe me, this is really the place you want as an artist. How I got my sculpting studio many years without paying a cent? It is time to make a new brown sculpture and a nice and healthy breakfast on board. And a very special thank you to our patrons. We really appreciate your help. Together we might save our world of the extinction of the need of art.